This video is brought to you by Currently. Save time by skipping the wait at a charging station. Currently delivers charging to your car, your home, the office, wherever you want it. Download the app and use promo code out of spec and get 30 days of free charging delivery. Hello and welcome back to another out of spec reviews video and welcome back to Windsor, Colorado, where we are back at clear detailing. Just a few days ago, I took my Tesla Model S that I picked up fresh off the truck here to do a full paint evaluation. And I'm actually dropping it off to have some more work done here at clear detailing with my friend Colton, where we're gonna be fully paint correcting the vehicle, ceramic coating it, and I'll tell you all about that process here in this video. However, I've also brought along the Rivian R1T, which we've also just purchased. So we have a brand new Tesla and a brand new Rivian, and you guys asked for it. We wanna see the difference in paint quality between the two vehicles. Also, also, someone made a pretty good comment on the last video. They're like, how do these actually compare to an established automaker in terms of paint quality? How about, let's just say, a base Honda Civic? Guess what? brought one of those along too. We just happened to have a Civic on test this week. By the way, this is the new Civic hatch and it's stellar, really great car. We're gonna see how well it compares in paint quality to the Rivian and the Teslas. A lot to do in this video and it's all happening here at Clear Detailing with, of course, my friend Colton. <laughs> hey, Colton, how's it going, sir? Good, how are you? Here are the keys. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so Colton just went for a rip in the Rivian. Hey, what do you think about this thing, by the way? Amazing. As, so you do like it? Very, very cool. It feels like very, very much like a Tesla. It is super, super cool. Yeah, and that's your Tesla Model 3 right back over there. And it's exactly. amazing. You get in, the controls are all the same. It feels just like an... A different version, I would say. Yeah, totally agree. So let's pull this thing in. We have the suspension in high setting right now, which might actually make cleaning lower panels easier. I would think so. Okay. Definitely in the wheel wells and the wheel arches. So yeah. Awesome. Nice. So let's back it in and then let's do similar to what we did with the Tesla Model S the other day, which we actually have just inside over here. This is going under the knife for a multiple day full paint protection uh, process in terms of ceramic coating. No film on this particular car. Personally, I don't love the way film looks and I'll be able to show you that on the Rivian. I think it's great to protect the paint if you care about it. And sometimes you have to give up a little bit of depth and clarity when you go to a film process. But this thing, even in just a couple days of driving since we were last here, is just covered in bug guts. Of course, the Rivian's coming in. You can hear the pedestrian warning system this loud air rushing noise, but what a cool looking vehicle. I am just love the Rivian. I'm so, so thrilled to be able to have two of, in my opinion, the most exciting new electric cars on the road. Oh, that's the thing. So this truck is not going to go through the full ceramic coating process. We are going to wrap this vehicle. So we're sort of taking a look at the paint today just for reference to see how well it's done. But we are going to be wrapping this with something interesting. And I have some ideas. This is one of our first wraps we've ever done on a car. Never wrapped a car. Never wrapped a car. <laughs> yeah. So this will be kind of interesting to see how the process goes. We like the prototype. Look from Rivian that from their prototype cars. So that's kind of our... Is that still our... We're taking inspiration, inspiration from the Rivian yeah. prototype wraps. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. All right, so we got the Rivian pulled in, and uh, I'm no expert here, but I think it's a little bit dirty, and we've, like, destroyed some gnarly bugs on this thing. So it's taken some impacts. It's been probably 2,000 miles, maybe 1,800 wow. miles since its last wash, plus or minus. And so definitely just covered in bug guts and everything. And so, you know, the thing with this is we really pulled it in here to sort of in the context of just looking at the Model S to see how well this is done. And similar situation, we picked this up at the factory. Okay. It's only been run through the auto touchless wash. Perfect. And so it should be pretty naked under all of this. Uh, which you should never treat paint like this if you're planning on keeping <laughs> it on your car. So you already noticed a couple things like paint protection film. Yeah, so it looks like we've got two areas, at least on this specific truck. This is the first Rivian I've been around. If you want to pull in here, we've got a little section here because um, we've got a nice cut out there. So that's definitely going to pick up as many little rock sand all the fun stuff there that's gonna and what's interesting is they did not wrap the edge of the ppf so the front bit of the paint is still taking the brunt of impact still exposed there so yeah that that may be something that 
you know, could be tweaked in the future to have that edge wrapped. Those, that leading edge will definitely get pretty hammered. It's just going to be destroyed. It'll be down to metal. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I would say, you know, this is almost useless because by the time you pull the PPF off, you already are going to have a strip of exactly. pretty ugly looking paint. So if I had a Rivian and I was taking delivery and I cared about the paint, first thing I would do is remove that and have that edge wrapped. Absolutely. And then coming back here too, what was interesting we noticed in the gear tunnel here, we have this entire panel actually wrapped. Yeah, so they did one single piece of film on PPF all around here. Uh, and pulling it out, actually just even around here, you can see the edge is just, again, the, the edges are not wrapped well. So it's just on the face plate of it, which is fine. And I think the reason that this is wrapped is so you know, when you open the gear tunnel, you're going to maybe lay it down on a rock sure. or something that's next to it. And so that makes sense to me. You can already see the color difference between raw Big color difference, yes. And the PPF yellowing a bit. Absolutely. And I wonder if that's just because the material of PPF or you just think it's any, any uh, film would do that. You know, they all films have kind of a 10 year warranty type of deal. I have seen this on the highest end films that you just get different colors. It's, it just changes from yellow to pure white. What you'll notice though, if we may go into this in the future, if I go and buff this, you're gonna see even more of a difference because this is gonna already be slightly oxidized. So you would see even a bigger difference there. Interesting, so just to match up the colors in two, three years down the line. Yeah, it, it, this will just continue to become more yellow and more yellow down the road. Interesting, and then are there any immediate sort of problem areas you see? Obviously it's a brand new truck, brand new design. I think the biggest thing that sticks out to me was that front lip that we showed, the yeah. uh, little air, air dam there as being like, wow, maybe that should have been plastic or something. Yeah. <laughs> what, what else are you seeing on this that looks abnormal? Because to me, it looks pretty good. It, it really does. Um, I mean, you can start getting into the panel gaps and stuff. I think this, just from an initial kind of inspection, looks pretty darn nice. I mean, it's a, it looks like a really well-built truck. I agree, and I haven't done much looking, but if you join me around front, I remember on the review truck we had, one side of the hood sat significantly higher or lower than the other. And okay. here it's perfectly matched up. Yeah, definitely. I did notice here was probably one of the only sections that looks slightly, slightly off, but. Yep. Again. Also, what is going on over here? Oh, that's just some dirt. Okay. Yeah, I think we're probably at the point where, especially white, it's very hard to see unless maybe you're outside under my specialized light. So let's probably get this washed down and we can get kind of a, a fresh look at it. Cool, so let's get it washed. We'll turn the lights off after that. Yes, absolutely. And we'll get the single point on there because white's hard. I mean, it was really easy with the Model S because it was Super black. easy on black. <laughs> white is a different, different ball game. So. And while we're just sort of here, can we talk about the plan for the Model S over the coming days? Absolutely. Because you're going to have this for the next two, three, four days, yes. something like that. Yep. So this, we washed it, I believe on Sunday, a couple days ago now. Yep. Um, collected a few bugs, a little bit of dirt here and there. Yeah, it did an airport run. Exactly. So. I'll go ahead and rewash it again. Um, we're gonna start off doing a paint correction. Um, probably do more on a spot paint correction instead of doing the entire paint. That again, makes sense to me. you and I talked about we want to leave as much paint as possible on here, go least aggressive first, and then kind of see where we go. Um, after we get paint correction polishing done, um, we're gonna coat this. We talked about doing G Technics Crystal Serum Light topped with XOV4. And how does that fit into the whole realm of ceramic coatings? Because we, I've heard, and, and again, I'm not asking you to really comment on any of sure. anyone else in the business, but you hear people price shopping ceramic coatings. They're yep. like, come by, we'll do this for 300 bucks. Sure. And then you'll hear another guy, come by, we'll do it for five grand. Yep. And and where is the difference in money going? What What is, explain the whole ceramic coating thing and your elevator pitch if you don't mind. So I think the biggest difference you're gonna see in ceramic coatings, which is actually one of the most important, is how a car is prepped. You can put any ceramic coating on, if you don't prep it right, it's not gonna last, it's not gonna work well. So again, we're going to basically compound and polish this thing and get the paint completely naked. Before I um, actually apply the ceramic coating, we will do a isopropyl alcohol wipe down twice. So you go around making yep. sure the paint is absolutely so clean you and perfect. Some kind of iron removal from the paint. So 
probably not on this being black. If yeah. it were a white car, yeah, you're gonna mm -hmm. see a little bit more stuff here and there. Um, most likely that's gonna even come out while I polish and compound sure, anyway. Sure. I am not a clay bar believer. That yeah, may be huh. controversial. Yeah. Um, I started out in the detailing world using them. To me, they kind of seem like a wasted step. Now, there are certain benefits to it. Again, if you have severe rust removal, okay, I may go in there, hit it with clay bar. This car though, if we hit this with a clay bar, you will it's mar the paint. Yeah, yeah. So, which is gonna cause more and more work. Now, yeah. the biggest thing is just getting it as clean as we possibly can and buffing and polishing it. Right, because the act of the compound in certain areas and then maybe a light finishing polish in others is gonna do a similar job to a clay bar. It's just gonna, it's gonna remove it, exactly. Okay. So you can just do pad uh, filling management. You can blow out the pads Absolutely. and things like that. You, you know your stuff on those. Uh, well, I don't know. It's so so similar. I mean, I just have watched every detailing video yeah. ever, right? So I Absolutely. found the guys that I thought, oh yeah, you know your stuff, and you know your stuff. So it's great, <laughs> great to see you taking the same approach that I would, sure. which is do the least amount possible. the The yeah. art of detailing is not overworking anything that doesn't yeah. need it. Again, you want to preserve the car as is. You yeah. can anybody can take the orange peel out of here, but as soon as you get a scratch. Now you have no paint left to really, you know, down the road, if you get a scratch here or there, now you can't go back in and buff that. You have physically no more clear to work with. Right, and the point of this detail is it's a protection detail. Absolutely. We're not going for the show car. This is not going to live in a trailer that's enclosed and get pulled out and put on a concourse <laughs> exactly. lawn. This car is going to get driven. So we're kind of giving up some depth, some quality yeah. in terms of visuals for protection. Definitely. This is Gion. I mean, they all really make some nice stuff. Um, I use a lot of PNS products, which is really nice for, you know, kind of DIY guys, even like you guys use them. Mm -hmm. um, some just spray chemicals on here. And what we're doing now is basically just letting it work. The paint's not hot or anything and just letting it kind of eat away at some of the bug guts. Yeah, especially on the window here. Definitely got some, some good road grind, but so this will be kind of an initial, um, like we did on the plaid. So I'm gonna put bug remover on, we're gonna foam it down, let it eat that dirt up, and then we'll give it a nice thorough rinse, re-foam it, and full hand wash. Very nice, yeah. This, I haven't seen the Rivian clean since we took it from the uh, factory, so this will be nice to see. Before we really start washing it down, let me put it in car wash mode, I forgot. And this is just to really stop the charge port from waking up on us. So I'll go into here and I'll hit car wash, turn on, and now, it's good to go. That now the charge port won't get filled with foam. <laughs> So now we got the car rinsed out. You haven't touched it yet with a mitt. You've just kind of knocked the initial layer of dirt off of it. Yeah, absolutely. And noticing definitely quite a few bugs, definitely gonna need, you know, a little bit more aggressive approach to washing. So we had some bug remover on there um, in the first place, foamed it down. It's looking a little bit better, but definitely a little bit dirty. This is kind of the deal when you work with uncoated paint. So everything is like, super sticky on there and you can even see like back here a normal car would that was coated this would really rinse down but look at the oh wow yeah look at the level of dirt on that so wow yeah it's just everything's embedding itself in exactly. there and the paint protection film is probably even a little bit more coarse than absolutely yeah, yeah. paint protection film likes to hold quite a bit of grime i mean you can even see the difference <laughs> yeah it look like two more. different colors yeah I don't know if the camera picks it up, but that's pretty wild. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the front end of this truck, we were just talking a little bit about some of the issues we ran into in the winter time when sure. we reviewed the truck, where especially, well, two concerns. A, rock chips on this panel. Yeah, because that's literally 
flat 90, well, pretty much 90 degree angle looking directly at it, so. Right, so rock chips, and then secondly, these were just getting covered in snow because the LEDs don't emit heat and it's kind of flat. So what do you think could be done about both of those problems? So I think just, if you're really prone to wanting to prevent rock chips, you could definitely wrap some film around here with clear bra. Um, as far as headlights, you could do the same. I would definitely coat these because like you said, they don't have the heated element or um, any sort of- Yeah, washer. Washer, exactly. So if we coated these, I bet they would stay a little bit better definitely in the winter. Yeah, so that should be a cool experiment. We should coat one and, and the leave other the other one uncoated yeah. and see how that goes in Definitely. different weather conditions. So um, we're talking about maybe doing a detailing channel. Yes. Just dropping a hint. If you guys want more detailing stuff, let us know. Perhaps that'll come into the future. <laughs> we'll see. But I All right, so what have we done to the truck now? So we foamed it down, uh, rinsed again, and that's again to get like the major, major dirt off. Um, went ahead and foamed it again and started the hand washing process. Now, Kyle, if you wanna come bring this in, this is a washed panel here. Look at how there is literally no protection there. It is just sheeting, sheeting water. Yeah, like, it doesn't really come up on camera, but this is water. Like my finger's wet. Yeah. It's just holding everything. I've never seen such a, I guess, unprotected panel. Yes. This Which... is like very, very naked paint. As yeah. Call it. And so obviously we know we're going to wrap it, but it almost feels a bit unsafe just to leave the paint bare like this. In a sense, it's going to be harder to wash. I really had to um, use some chemicals to get those bugs off. Normally, like on my Model 3 over there, those bugs, I could literally hit it with water and they just come flying off. Um, that is a coated vehicle. So again, we're not going that full approach on this because we're talking about doing the wrap. Um, I think what we'll do is kind of a light wet coat as we call it. So it's just a spray on, it's more of a sealant base. So if you want to think about it in the rounds, we have a wax, a sealant and ceramic coatings. This is kind of that middle approach that you're not gonna have a ton of adhesion problems when you go to wrap this. I would hope that they would anyways clean that off once we- Yeah, do an you know, alcohol wash exactly. of some kind, yeah. And that'll take the sealant off. Now, if we were to coat it, you're gonna have some adhesion issues on that. So that's something to think about, um, you know, cars down the road. Um, if you're gonna get them wrapped, if you're getting them clear broad, definitely do not do the ceramic coating first. Right, totally agree. And um, yeah, so I guess just anything to get a little bit of water beating properties, Absolutely. any any sort of protection. And so let's stay on this panel here. I'm yep. gonna show you just in quick time here how simple this is. So this is a cool product I found by Gion. Okay. Um, so this is called Wet Coat. And literally all we're gonna do is come in, hit it with a little mist. Oh, dang. And look at how that just immediately starts beating water. Whoa, that's pretty cool. This is a really cool product. And I use this a lot of times on um, maintained coating vehicles. So like if you come in here and start getting little intricate areas, I mean, you can get into every single nook and cranny with this to get just a little bit more protection than right because it's paint. it's not as hardcore as even some of the sealants that need to be hand applied i right. imagine this is a very very light version but again this is going to make it a little bit easier to clean for you and not go too aggressive to where wrapping it's going to become an issue yeah i just think that i just it kind of freaks me out that this is wet and it's still just like <laughs> yeah, sitting on the there difference from that versus even the front door here so yeah that's crazy yeah. so yeah definitely want to do the whole truck we'll just hit it with a quick spray yeah, just to give it some kind of protection now check this out so i just quickly hit this i mean literally sprayed it and rinsed it look at the difference there of all the water beating and just flat sheeting water right there. it's all wet and uh, oh, right. and even on the plastic, you can see now, granted, this is not going to last very long. It's no. not anything for long term, but it's just one simple layer that shows, OK, well, you probably shouldn't just leave bare paint on the truck, in exactly. my opinion. Exactly. And not, not even for protection, like you were saying, just ease of washing it. Yes. It's so much harder because all the dirt just literally like sticks on here. The bugs in the front were they were pretty caked. I know you had a road trip, so that's pretty common, but... 
Um, if this would have had this on it, oh my gosh, it would have cleaned up so much easier. And this is just a simple spray on simple thing. Yeah, so, let me show you again in real time here. We'll yeah. get the other half here while we're going. So I literally hit it, come back in. <laughs> It. Amazing. That's so cool. I, now, what will be curious is how long does that last for? But at least probably a few weeks. What do so you think? It's, they say right around a three-month range. Some of them go Whoa. up to six. The way you drive cars, you're definitely going to get a little bit less on <laughs> yeah. there. You know, getting this thing filled with mud and dirt and everything, it's going to not last as long. But again, this is a great product. If you don't want to go that full ceramic coating route or need something maybe in between while we're waiting. Yeah, definitely this type of technology did not exist back when I was inside of no. getting, you know, five, 10 years ago. This is really cool. It's blowing my mind at least. Yeah, so the cool thing, like even if you want to come in here, like we've got protection on like every single little edge. So I will actually use this in my business as well on cars that I've maintaining. So like say my Model 3 over there, um, if it starts to get a little wonky here or there, I may hit this and it just is gonna help the ceramic coating in general. Yeah, that's super sweet. Well, I'm glad we're doing it to this truck because it'll make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> Absolutely, because I don't use it normally like that. But about three quarters of a bottle on this and it really, uh, really works well. So now we have the truck completely clean. Uh, we put a little bit of a coating on there, which shouldn't really affect our ability to see paint defects. You know, we're yeah. not necessarily looking for swirls because we've had the truck for a couple of weeks. We've brushed up stuff. I took it off-roading and nailed this into a rock. <laughs> so like, you know, it's not perfect. What we're really looking for is factory paint defects, which we can certainly show you. Yep. Uh, as a starting point though, we did the same thing on the plaid, which you're gonna go through and fix a lot of it. Absolutely. But we were generally pretty impressed with the paint on a new Tesla. Overall, a couple things considered, yeah. I would say um, we can bring it back here. This was one of the weirdest things I probably have ever seen on any brand new car. Um, this section right back here, if you bring that in, that nice bubble in the fender, that is pretty uncommon for what you see. Um, right. Other types of sanding marks, transport marks from anything, you know, like we discussed in the last video, talking about the tail lights here, how they were pretty soft plastic. They've got a little bit of marring and scratching on it. Um, other than that, like we talked about, I think this is pretty darn good yeah, in all aspects. Overall impressed, I mean, there's a scratch that we could have very well done ourselves. Sure. Um, and the, the paint thickness was very relatively even across the whole car. Except for a few minor spots. Right, and this was one of those spots where Absolutely. I went from, from three and a half mils to six almost, I believe, or five it and a bit. It was five and a half or six, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure. But in a really short period of yeah. time. And one of the things we wanted to look at, and there was also like weird scratches all through. Yeah, right? absolutely. And so if, watch the whole video, we really went in depth on this. It's not perfect, but it's not uncommon. And absolutely. so what we wanted to see was, is Rivian in the same place? And then of course, after this, we'll pull in the Honda Civic just to take a quick glance at it. Um, the Rivian's paint is obviously a little bit older, but this is a new paint shop in a relative, I mean, it's a new factory for Rivian. Yeah. Um, and new paint shops take a really long time to get dialed in. Mm -hmm. And so in your impression, other than paint, there's one thing I did want to point out actually, this whole quarter panel is like bumped out a half yes. millimeter or something. Yeah, so if you check this out right here, the, the little gapping, again, you can get nitpicky on every single car. If you start getting in there, yeah, there's panel gap alignments. And we're not crazy about panel gaps, you're the same way. Right. I mean, it's just like, okay, cars are gonna be different. But this is what freaks me out a little bit more than anything. I may actually bring this to Rivian yeah. and say, hey, can you adjust this? Because this whole thing, there's a good probably two millimeter drop from one panel to the next right there. And you know, for efficiency, that's the way you want it. The front panel sticking out farther. <laughs> so that's great. We're not catching air. But it just, um, now that I've kind of seen that, I can't unsee that one. Yep. The only other panel gap alignment on the whole truck is this right here, where it comes in real tight and then gets wide. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the thing's solid and super made. It, it really is, it really is. I was actually like sort of blown away with how well screwed together, if you will, everything fits on a brand new production line. I would agree. 
So one thing down here I'm definitely noticing right away, we can see this huge bubble down here. So that is actually where the clear bra has peeled up, and dirt's gotten under that. Um, even on this edge here, as you can see that edge has already started to lift film and dirt has gotten under there, which is pretty darn common if that's not either wrapped or not um, put on that rounded edge. Yeah, they really need to round that piece. I think I know, for the extra five minutes it would take per truck at the factory. It would change a lot. That's going to change everyone's ownership experience. And even, even back here, if we come in, this leading edge, which is kind of important because you're getting rocks kicked up here, this edge is not wrapped and already you can see the dirt build up in that. Right, yeah. And you know, especially a truck like this that is based towards the adventure type, take this thing off road, go enjoy it. Yep. You're gonna see this on all of the trucks. You're just gonna see this black line. Yeah, around exactly. <laughs> and that's that's a bit of a shame in my opinion. Now, I would actually probably, if I was a truck I was gonna keep and wanted it to really look nice, because mm -hmm. it's a truck to me, I've been whatever. But I would pull the PPF off of this. I would totally agree. Yeah, but I don't know if I would feel comfortable enough to pull the PPF off of that front panel. I would actually have installed I would rocks. definitely agree, especially right there, because it's just, you're literally taking rocks and just hammering that yeah, thing right that's there. going to so. be, especially like drifting it off-road and stuff, everything's oh, yeah. coming right through here. And I believe someone had mentioned on the earlier Rivians, there used to be a net here. Of some oh, kind. Entry, like a mesh in yeah. there. But, but our truck does not have anything like that. I thought that wouldn't last long anyway. Yeah, I mean, we would blow that out in two <laughs> seconds. So, you know, that's also part of why we got the truck, is we're going to do stuff people wouldn't normally do sure. with it. So let's break it and find out what breaks. Absolutely. Um, so those are immediate things that we're noticing. Uh -huh. Take us on a little bit of a deeper dive tour. Okay. So this may be hard to pick up on camera. If it is, we can shut the lights off. Um, white is notoriously tricky to see defects. Um, so Kyle, if you want to pull this in right here, believe right in that spot you can kind of see like a ghosting a little bit of hazing right just i got it right there so yep we can absolutely see Perfect. that and it's all right right here for us so what happened here in my eyes is this has been da sanded and then just not finished out um again we can go in and talk about um them trying to fix all of this that takes so much time to get that refined to the level that someone like myself would go in there, fix that, compound it, polish it, and then protect it after. So that's definitely um, an area we talked about. Again, tail lights, as we talked about on the Model S Plaid, these definitely have a little bit of marring on them. I would say it's pretty average. Yeah, it doesn't seem as bad as it was on the Tesla. I would definitely agree with that for the tail lights. Um, now, if we start getting down into here, there is another really ghosty hazing mark there. So again, denibbed and then um, sanded and just not finished out. Yeah, it is amazing how on this panel there was maybe two or three different sections, right? I'm trying to remember and find that one with my light here. Yeah, we had the lights off earlier looking at it. And it's a lot course. easier to see when you yeah. have the lights off. But again, this light source is basically like you being outside in the sun. So that's why we use a single light source so you can really see what you're gonna see outside. One of the big ones, we can go back and find that one later here with the lights off. This on the hood is probably one of the worst marks. I think you can probably get there. So as a, mm -hmm. as a detailer, I'd be a little bit concerned about this one because it does actually go over that edge. Um, so I would- Hold your light just a little bit that way. A little farther mind. back? Yeah, maybe a little bit closer now. Hard to pick it up for sure. There, there we, we go. go. Look at now that right there. It. Yep, that's pretty brutal. Yeah, and then if we can get up on this little edge here, trying to see where that light is, there's definitely some more marring right yep. in there. See it. So as a detailer, especially this edge, after seeing that, I'm gonna take that edge super delicate because the likelihood that this is sanded down, you can actually even see in this, Kyle, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, the texture around which would be your orange peel where that's sanded, it's perfectly flat and clear. Mm -hmm. So they this removed edge, a lot of paint. Exactly, removed a ton of paint. So that edge, I'd be really, really careful about. And we even noticed it going pretty far through the edge as well. Yes.
especially, like I said, when you start taking texture out like this, you're definitely starting to get into the clear pretty darn good. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame. And I think really the only red flag from a paint quality standpoint yeah. that we've seen so far. So what I would say is there's, there's good and bad with what's happening here. So they are actually going in and doing some quality control, looking for dust nibs, looking for defects like that. Problem is they're just not finishing them out. Um, it normally, you know, something like this, we need to go in compound and polish that. That takes hours and hours of time. When you're mass producing vehicles, that's very, very tricky to do. Yeah, makes sense. But I think they took the right compromise. To the naked eye, myself, outside, I've never noticed any of these things yeah. and the truck looks fine to Absolutely. me. As soon as we pull it in here with these crazy <laughs> lights, with your single source light, that's when it's like, okay, let's change it. And that's the point. It's, you know, I don't think anyone expects to take delivery of a vehicle and have it, you know, concourse ready. I think most people think that it should, but the reality is they're just not. I mean, yeah. Tesla, we know we've had issues with um, issues like that. We only saw a couple sanding marks on that where this has been yeah. almost nearly most panels. I so. would say three or four times the amount of work went into this truck post painting than that car. Yes. But which at the end is going to cause your detailer at the end more work fixing this. So it's kind of a catch 22 is uh, we fix some stuff, but we're also into some other issues. So now that you've had this and the Tesla, what would you say about the quality in comparison of the cars? Obviously we're dealing with a black car, but you also own a white Tesla. Yep. And so just in your impression, what would you say about the differences of the paint job? Yeah, so differences between Rivian versus Tesla. I would say they are pretty darn close. Um, as you can like come in, look at the orange feel texturing on the vehicles are very similar. Um, I would say good on Rivian. I mean, this is a brand new company that's competing with a company that's had millions and millions of cars sold now. So very, very impressive, especially from a detailing aspect. Um, if you want to get into this, Kyle, we can start taking some measurements and yeah. see, okay, what does Rivian's paint look like? This is a non-metallic paint. So kind of white versus black, this is a great comparison between um, non-metallic, whereas like we saw in my Model 3, multi-pearl coat deals like that. Yep, yep, exactly. So let's, you got the almighty paint gauge out. So, and this is not the highest end paint gauge. This is something you guys can get on Amazon. If you're trying to buy used cars, this is a great insurance policy to look at okay maybe this fender had been painted or whatever it'd be a great for you guys to have on there i agree 100 percent. so 4.82 mils this is kind of again that same area we were looking at the model s and we had a big discrepancy in paint so that's actually quite a bit different almost yeah half a mil half a mil more oh and, and now we're down to four two so as we go around, you're going to notice that, and it's on every single car. It's just, it changes all the time. Right, and that's just because panels curve, exactly. paint machines need to be calibrated. So we have 581 here. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we come up here near 378. So look at that big difference. Wow. Again, even from the edge of a door to the center, a couple feet away, but still the same panel. But still safe enough thickness of paint. We're not really sure what that thickness is made up of, if it's paint Correct. or clear. But I would say, you, you mentioned in the last video, anything under 3.5 is like, okay, that's pretty thin. Exactly. So I'm going to, as a detailer, take that into consideration. Every single time I put a buffer on the paint, we are risking um, compromising that paint. So we, again, like we talked about our plan on the Model S is to go least aggressive possible and then protect the paint. Yep, totally agree. So we can kind of keep going around here, maybe this back panel here. So we have 6.2 mils there. Oh, wow. So what a difference of 6.2 to 3.75. On just the, the side of the car. Yeah, that's a huge, <laughs> huge difference. And so maybe as Rivian, we should try and get like new production trucks, maybe every six months or something like and that as viewers take delivery. Yeah, but again, like even on the Model S, quite a bit different. That's a car that's been produced for years and years and years. True. Even on my car, difference of painting textures and... And these, these are things you can't see with your naked eye. This no, is why you need the gauge. Not at all. So and then back here, smack dead in the middle of the tailgate. Yep. 4.12 mils. So maybe over here, let's kind of take that same section. And we have 5.56. So okay. actually those two panels kind of about the same. 
and 544. So we're actually looking a little bit more consistent. Let's kind of go here where you had a little bit. So again, thin. this area of the door, this is actually kind of thin. Mm -hmm. When you're getting into the three, four range. That's, and that seems like the wrong place to be thin because I think there's going to be a lot of stuff going on around the handle. Closing yep. doors here, especially these. These darn pillars always just get... Oh, they get destroyed. <laughs> so... How about if we just measure the center of the driver's Absolutely. door? So that was three, four, right? Yes. Three, four, and five, nine, two. So similar to what we saw on the other side, this exactly. big discrepancy there. Exactly. Hmm. Very interesting. I'll leave, let's even go right in here because it's on a similar, but that's five, six, nine. So the difference between this part of the door and that is nearly two mils. That's very, very interesting. Hmm. I wonder if we'll see them calibrate their machines or if they're comfortable with this. I don't know. I, I, it's not anything that makes me uncomfortable. It's just something that, why isn't it more consistent? If you look at, let's say, a McLaren or a mm -hmm. Porsche, are you seeing these types of paint inconsistencies as much as these two cars are? So you'll see slight differences. Um, now, McLarens and stuff like that are a little different because they're on carbon. Mm. Um, this machine, this particular one, does not measure on carbon panels, on plastic panels. They do make... Um, some very, very serious machines to where detailers like myself can go in there, measure that, make sure we have enough paint. Um, most of the manufacturers, again, you'll see up and down discrepancies, but overall they may be a little bit tighter in their tolerances of maybe have more paint on them, but not such a big, vast discrepancy. Interesting, yeah. And, and you know, at the end of the day, from my naked eye, if I just walked up to this, there is nothing on this truck that would shock me today from what I've seen. Yeah. It just looks for a new automaker. Alyssa, yeah, there's a dent there. Actually, we, we should have brought that up as well. If you bring your light over and hit this from the bottom, we might be able to see this. Mm, yeah, not quite getting it. May even, right. Kyle, from back here, if you kind of oh, yeah. go up and down between where that light is shining through on that garage door. Yeah, hold on. Let's see if we can pick it up. There, there we go. go. Got it. And it's right here is the dent and that could totally just have been from us i don't Absolutely. expect that you know that's nothing we could put on rivian at all um i would say my, my impression of the truck you know is the paint looks great the build quality is solid um yeah. no squeaks no rattles and like we've already put 2500 rough miles on this yeah. thing and i i'd like to say too i don't i understand like these defects may look severe I don't think that's really a bad thing. Again, I think they're going in there trying to fix some issues here and there. I think that's a good step in the right direction. Um, if your paint comes in and you have a bunch of dust nibs in it, I would say that's a little worse because I can go in and fix that. Whereas if there's dust nibs, that just causes more and more issues down the road. So Makes sense. Well, I got to say, I'm pleased with the paint job on this. I would agree. And uh, any last thoughts before we pull the Rivian out of here? Maybe the bug gut situation? Yeah, so let's talk about that. So this car, as or this truck, as we saw, when it came in, it was sheeting water. There, it, like literally zero, zero, zero protection. So this front end, again, like just a slab going down the road. We have some serious bug guts and residue that have actually eaten away into the clear. So if you can kind of pick that up a little bit, we may need to move your the... light around a little bit. Yeah, now I'm getting it. There so we go. All those spots in there that what's actually happening is the bug guts are actually eating away at the um, clear all over the front end. So as a detailer, I'm going to come in here when I see that cut the paint basically with a compound and then we'd polish that out. This kind of stuff is where ceramic coatings are so, so important, especially on a front end like this. If this truck was black times 10, that's going to be a lot worse because black paint gets hotter. Those just, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the Audi. <laughs> yeah, your Audi is going to be pretty bad, but your Audi actually has paint protection film, um, which we're going to have to remove because it's kind of destroyed. Right in there, you can actually see the impression there. So they de-nib that, and then like as a detailer, again, like we talked about on the plaid, I would go in there, compound and polish that. Yeah, so and did they just not fix that up at the factory at that point? So that's pretty common. Um, I see this on Ferraris, Porsches, Audis, wow. Lamborghinis. Um, Another spot here. Yeah, they'll quickly hit that and go, okay, we de-nibbed it, and instead of taking the whole time to get it rectified, you know, now a detailer is gonna need to go back in. So definitely some scratches down the side. Nothing super, super severe. 
I mean, overall, just from looking literally at that one panel, the paint looks really nice. Um, again, few scratches. That can even be from how you guys have it. it. Check yeah. this out right here. That's a perfect sanding mark right there to, again, denibbed and just sand it out and not properly finished. Yep, so that is such an odd thing to find, but you you find stuff that big on other automakers too? Absolutely, okay. I've seen it Porsche. Here's another one actually, just seeing it here. Um, Man, so they really went through, found a bunch of stuff on So, this. which I, I, as a detailer, like to see because that means they are going into some quality control instead of leaving um, dust particles, nibbed panels in okay. there. The problem is, they're not, they don't have time to sit there and finish it out. Like it's refining the paint to the level that I can get it. Yeah. That's where it takes a long, long time. Sure. And that's why it might be beneficial for someone to come to someone like you to have Absolutely. just to get a nice starting Cause point. you're going to see this literally on all types of vehicles. I'm very curious to look at the Honda we have outside yeah. to see if there's some issues like that. Porsche, um, front and rear bumpers, the entire bumper so this i understand this is the bedside but yeah. like on a porsche here you have rotary marks and everything they just really? don't have the amount of time to finish that out man that just seems like such a shame you know it does um and i i get people's frustration with oh it's a hundred fifty thousand dollar whatever thousand dollar vehicle yeah i understand that but when you also take into consideration the amount of time it takes me to get those issues out, right? they don't have that kind of time. Right, I mean, it takes you days in some scenarios. Yes, I mean, a new car I've had that'll be 30, 40 hours of buffing on these things just to get them actually proper, proper, proper. So not as many marks on these panels here. No, definitely not. Um, there is a weird sort of glazing. Oh yeah, what's up with that? It looks like I can only see it from So that again it. looks like a DA sanding mark. Um, if I come in here looking at the bottom, there's some kind of pigtails. That's um, very indicative of a DA sander. So they quickly hit it. Looks like they polished this, didn't hit it quite enough. Yeah, and I'm seeing scratches all around here. So let's pull this out. Let's get the Honda Civic in just as a point of comparison. Sure. So, and see what's going on with that one. So Colton, we got the Civic pulled in here and you've made it pitch black. <laughs> what, what is going on, sir? So this is kind of the best way, especially a light car in white like this. Um, a darker color car, it, you really don't see, or you see more than on a white because it's so distractingly bright in your eyes. So what I'm doing here is I've got one single light source and that light source is gonna let me see exactly right around that light. And I can see swirl marks, any sort of sanding marks, issues like that. I will say just going over this, this is a press car. So swirl marks gonna happen. This car's kind of been either thrashed or just improperly cleaned yes, from a detailing aspect. All of the above. All uh, of the above. <laughs> so I'm not necessarily looking at those because yeah, this would need so much buffing to get all of that out. Of course. Um, at this time, we're not super worried about it. I would say I have not, I'm maybe three quarters of the way around the car. I have not seen a single sanding mark or anything like that, which would kind of make sense. Um, I'm not thinking that Honda is going in there trying to sand every little dust nib out. You will notice, look at the massive difference of color on bumper here. This is like a bright, bright, bright pearl white and very yellow. Yeah, very yellow. I've never seen such a look at the color Look at the difference of actual pearl um between that it is a different color a different size fleck now is it possible and you know the thing is we just happen to have this car on test this week it's a brand new 2022 civic um hatchback but it has three ish thousand miles on it something like that is it possible that that bumper's been replaced it's definitely possible but i will tell you this is so darn common really um, okay this panel here i'm gonna see if you can see my finger in this shadow here this is metal and plastic. Right. These are painted at different times in different ways. The interesting thing here is the difference in flake, the size of it, the amount of it, and then the actual color difference is substantially different. Um, I would, let's kind of check this front bumper. Maybe we can see 
if that's any different here. I'm also feeling similar to that raised panel in the Rivian. This back door is raised significantly. Definitely. So you can even see here, again, we've got a little bit different of a pearl. And that can even be, especially on these two, of how that pearl is laid down, because it's laid down in a specific way to where it reacts with your eyes. So yeah, definitely some difference there. Wow. Other, other than that, I mean, overall, I would say this looks like a nice, a pretty darn nice paint job. The um, color is really similar to your Model 3. Very, very similar in pearl effect and color and tint and everything to my Model 3 as well. I love the paint on this. A pearl white is just like so striking at times, but yep. the Rivian with the non-metallic, that's pretty it's darn like cool It's like BMW too. Alpine white versus mineral white. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. No, other than that, I mean, I've kind of quickly gone around this thing. I don't see the kind of sanding marks that we saw in both the Rivian and the, and the Model Tesla. S. So does that indicate that this is either A, a better paint job, or B, just not as much care going into every single vehicle to try and correct issues? So I think there's probably a couple things going on. I would say that Honda has their paint system probably dialed in slightly bit more than both Tesla and Rivian, yeah. which they're mass producing these cars. They've been in this business for years and years and years and years. But when you do that, you're not having as many defects, so you're not going in there sanding, buffing them. I would doubt they do little to any buffing on these ever, Very or sanding on these. Yeah, because we haven't seen any DA marks, we haven't seen any right. dust nib marks. Um, but the one thing that I think could be a really telltale sign is when we get the paint gauge out, the thickness gauge, and we see what the difference is. Let's do that. Let me uh, get the lights on here, and we can kind of go around and check out what we got. Yeah. Woo! Wow. Hello. <laughs> wow. I got to say, by the way, just my impressions on the Civic, this is such a nice car. I know it's kind of boring as just a Honda Civic, but truly wonderful. So we'll, we'll start at kind of the famed area right up here on the hood where we did the Model S right. and put this into mills. 3.1. Which is thin. actually very thin. 3.9. So again, 4.4. Four. So Similar. look at the difference there though. Yep. Again, so this is a car that in my opinion would be definitely calibrated. I would say there's slightly a bit more orange peel in this. I personally, in my opinion, on orange peel, don't think it's the biggest issue. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand people want absolute glass, smooth paint. On these types of vehicles, it is so unrealistic for them to do that and spend the amount of time to get it. Um, yeah, orange peel doesn't look terrible either, and you would have to remove so much of that paint. So much of it. So we're down to 371. And what was here. that last measurement you took? Four something, right? 382. Four, five. Four, five, three. So look at that, even that yeah. little difference. Wow. So it's not uncommon, like what we saw. Well, Model exactly. S, that's a bigger disparity. That was quite a bit bigger, absolutely. But it's it's not like you're just gonna have a consistent flow, <laughs> which we knew going into this, but at least now we're kind of showing it with what I would say is and should be considered a benchmark, a Japanese high quality uh, mass produced vehicle. Absolutely. So let's check this out here where we did the Rivian and see on this door here. Let me Ooh. just get that again. So that's got quite a bit of paint there. So that's five, eight, six. And then if we pop down here to the center of the door, four, nine, six. So yeah, a little bit more less consistent. different. Yeah, definitely a lot more paint. And again, this right. is just- This is a thick spot on this car where it's a thin spot very, very thin. on the Rivian. Maybe let's look here at just the center of the roof. So that's the biggest we've had so far. So if you consider that at five, six, nine mils, and we were getting like into the threes. lower, lower threes up front, that's still a big difference. That's a big again. difference. Yep, absolutely. Maybe here on the on the back deck. So this appears to be it's not metal, so I can't, right, yeah. I cannot measure that. Yeah, it might be thermoplastic of some kind. Yeah, which is becoming more and more common yes. on automakers. So that was five, two, one here on the back. Let's again, we'll go on the drivers here. Six, Whoa. six mils. So where there are thin spots on the Rivian, there are thick spots on this. Yeah. And so then we, can we check your Model 3 by sure. that door handle area? Let's do that. To me, that seems like such a reasonable area to have a thick spot. I would agree. Um, but again, it's just how these darn things are painted. 10 mils of paint there. Whoa. And they both have pearlescent effect. 
and 12 mils on the center of the door. Wow, big, big. Lots of thick paint on that model. Well, plate. again, like we talked about, I think this probably has quite a bit more um, layers of paint than, say, the Pearl Effect on this. Okay. Um, again, I can't exactly know, okay, we have six mils of clear coat on this, we sure. have a mil there, and two mils of of color so right. it, it's hard to know but it's just as a detailer in the back of my head i need to understand that when we start getting low into that three range like kind of take things yeah. easy and not don't hammer go away. big compound for a long time exactly that makes sense well my impressions after now evaluating the model s and the rivian up close and sort of having the civic as a benchmark mm -hmm. is uh pros and cons to each Sure. Definitely different colorations on different panels. Absolutely. And that probably is most significant in white, I would think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, especially with a pearl. For whatever reason, the pearl, when it lays down just slightly different, it looks so, so different in tint. Very interesting. But in terms of paint thickness, this by far had the best consistency out of either of those two. Absolutely. And then it's hard to know. I didn't really see any dust nips. I think Honda's just got their paint booth calibrated. I think they're literally painting the cars and, and just sending, sending them on their way. And and I think they are so calibrated they can do that. Yeah. And so definitely, you know, the next level in terms of quality. Now is the paintwork itself a higher quality paintwork? I don't know. That's when we start getting into, I don't know, how hard is a paint, how it's soft is a exactly. paint. Exactly. And when, when you start buffing on a car, you really start feeling the differences of very very hard paint where you're having to throw all the compound at it yep what i'm guessing your model s is a light polish is going to like really yep. just quickly <laughs> cut through that paint so I agree. it's yeah. a big difference and that's where you really start noticing the differences especially when you're going like really hammering it on a buffer and so to put it in super layman's terms for me and our audience how would you rank them best to worst or i should say worst to best which has either the most defects the most compromise and maybe the less the least quality so i'm not sure that i would put i i would give this little guy probably like we're up there we're we're playing with hundred thousand dollar vehicles this is this is good um i don't think that i would pick one or the other hmm. i would kind of have to know maybe how do things age down the road how does the clear look on the hood that hasn't been protected like the rivian had um I would say cars anymore are getting so darn good. Mm. Like just cars in general, Kias, Hyundais, Porsche, you name it. Like they're really, really starting to get good at making these darn cars. Yeah, that makes sense. So maybe the, the whole paintwork conversation in terms of quality mm -hmm. gets talked about more than it should. I, I wouldn't disagree. I think people <laughs> need to get their car looking proper, get yeah. it protected and enjoy it. And then enjoy it. That's my theory right there. Well, we'll end it with that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little detailing episode. I know they're long, but you seem to enjoy the Model S one. And now we got the Rivian benchmarked, we got the Civic benchmarked, and uh, perhaps more to come. Absolutely. And can't wait to see what my Model S looks like when it's done. We'll have a video of us picking it up, going through the final results. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, seeing how that thing looks complete, because it's going to be mega. Can't thank you enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Great. Scott. See you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.